HM Enterprise. Are you thinking about strong, durable electric and electronic appliances such as electric wires, sockets, modern switches, stand and ceiling fans of different categories, flat screen TVs of different sizes, solar fridges and freezers, solar panels, solar batteries, beaming ceiling lights? Look no further than HM Enterprise. We are open for contracts and supply of materials from Combo to Basse. Visit us at number 1 Caraba Avenue, Westfield or call us on 4396270, 4396270 or 7713911. HM Enterprise, going further. HM Enterprise, going further. This program is brought to you by BB Consultancy in partnership with B4U Properties, your reliable estate dealer, BMG Properties, outstanding home providers, Kairos Real Estate, link us and be a home builder, Double Jewelry Real Estate, operation on your property, Freedom Properties, in Allah we trust. Global Properties Your Innovative Property Solutions Combo Real Estate Operation Shelter Donation Sultan Traders and Real Estate We don't bend the truth to make sales Staff Africa Global Our experience is global. Our focus is Africa. Assalamu alaikum wherever you may be. Welcome to yet another important edition of the Gambia's Real Estate TV program. This is the show that enlightens you about properties and property managers in the Gambia. With me, Abu Bakar Dabo, and tonight, or this evening, I have Mr. Mustafa Njai, the Managing Director of TAF Africa Global. TAF, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. I'm uh, BB, photocopy of BB. Huh? <laughs> you, are not the, you are not the original BB. <laughs> you, you, are, over this you are photocopy. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, thank you, thank you for having me on the show. Uh, welcome. Uh, this man right here is the first private citizen in the country to establish or to build a proper estate in the Gambia. And of course, this man has accumulated numerous awards across the country, across the globe, in fact, I will tell you. But the most recent one had happened just a few months ago, let me tell you, in Nigeria, South Africa Global, or Mr. Mustafa Njaya has been awarded the person or the real estate person of year 2020. I want to congratulate you. Thank on you. That. Thank you very much, Bibi. Thank yes. you. And I'm sure that is not the only award that you won when it comes to real estate uh, business. And over 40 years of indelible experience and achievement in the business, Mr. Njaya this evening will elaborate and we will come back just after the break to talk more about South Africa Global, the challenges and some of the achievements he has. And I will tell you, do not forget, he is a Gambian. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. After the break. After the break. Tough Africa Global is the first and biggest private real estate developer in the Gambia with a presence in seven other African countries. We are launching the development of the first smart and most modern office and retail towers in the Gambia called Tough Twins, located in the heart of the Kanifin Institutional Area and 10 minutes drive from Banjul. Tough Twins is designed to have five floors of office spaces ranging from 50 meters square to over 1,000 meters square, two elevators, central air conditioning, 24-hour electricity and water supply, with the ground floor reserved for banking, supermarket, restaurant and coffee shops. For your bookings and reservations, please call now on 376-2333 or 776-2333. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, I am Abu Bakar Dabo. This is the Gambia's Real Estate TV program. And with me, I have Mr. Mustafa Njai, the Managing Director of TAF Africa Global. Mr. Njai, welcome back after the commercials. Thank you very much, Bibi. Yes, you're operating in different countries, including Nigeria and recently Sierra Leone Freetown. Tell us about that. Yes, um, we're, we're operating in um, now, if you include free, Sierra Leone, it's, uh, it will be nine, uh, registered you know, in nine African countries, uh, but in terms of active business, very active, it was uh, Gambia and, and Nigeria. As you know, uh, Nigeria uh, is quite huge uh, so. with 36 states. So each state is as big as a country. Um, so when I went into Nigeria, I mean, it swallowed me. I couldn't really expand to other countries. So I just suspended some of them with the registration. 
and obviously Gambia. We have always operated in Gambia. Most recently, um, we are now in the process of registering and negotiating uh, for operations in Sierra Leone. Good. Uh, th th that sounds very interesting. And also in the Gambia, we understand that uh, the first uh, proper real estate being built by a private citizen, it's you. That's the Yarambamba. That's the, most, that's the first successful real estate, if I can remember. And of course, we understand that you've recently built and completed the Dalaba. And of course, the Tulip and now this, the tough city in yeah. Bunjur. Yeah. So anyway, you're doing great. Now Thank tell you. us about uh, with, the, with the coming of uh, so many real estate agencies, of course, there's, these are not to be called developers. Uh, but tell us the future of the housing sector in the Gambia. Well, the future is bright. You know, housing is a basic human need. And uh, there's demand anywhere in the world, you know, just like in the Gambia. So the future, the population is growing at an average of about 2%, 2.5%, even so in, at times it can go up to 3%. So what it means is that more people are going to um, uh, be housing. in this country, mm -hmm. and, and obviously they will need more. They will need houses. Um, uh, having a shelter, having a roof over one's head, is a basic human need. And then, uh, with the numbers increasing, obviously uh, prosperity also is increasing. People are earning more. They want better life. Uh, the future is bright. The future is bright, but it comes with its own challenges. So the future, really, we, I can see um, uh, that there will be more and more uh, players in this, in this, in this uh, sector, uh, which, is, which is normal. There will be demand, demand, but there are very huge, big challenges in this sector. Yes. Yeah. Of course, uh, it comes with the, the challenges will be there always, and we'll come back to the challenges later in the program. But now, uh, uh, like we, you talk about the population, okay, still you've built massive estates like i mentioned the the dalaba the the yarambamba and now the Tilo. but still the gambian people we there are a lot of people that are in need of the housing you've been the pioneer you've been the mustafa Njai of africa not only the gambia still uh, the the housing sector is it's like we have in housing deficit in the country uh, what's, your, what's your plan to able to meet the, 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 the middle income earners, to able to get their own property or their own house? Uh, there is, as I said, there's a demand. Now, um, in every country you go, there's a deficit. Yes. Uh, there is no country in the world uh, that, doesn't, that has a surplus in housing. But um, all depends on, on the, the supply. Uh, supply also dictated by good policies. Government has big role to play in housing supply, and I wouldn't go into detail. But if you ask my plans as a private developer, and that's yes. one thing that people need to be aware yes. that um, Tough Africa Global is a private housing developer. Yes. And when anything is private, it's profit driven. There's nobody who's in private business and uh, you know, of our You're social the, services. Yes, yes, we're course. not an NGO, we're not a non governmental organization, of course. we're not a charitable organization. We're in business, and business obviously has its own liability, you know, and, and responsibilities. So um, now, with all this, all, all, with doing all this, we are also aware that we have social responsibilities. Uh, now, for us, over because what we have done over the years, we are always trying to be innovative, try to see how much we supply mass housing. You know, we were the first mass housing developer. Yes. Now, in doing so, there are a lot of issues that we need to address. So, what Africa Global has been able to do was to look at designs, uh, rather than having designs that are inefficient, mm. meaning in size and so many other things. Yes. Uh, Tap Africa looks at what is it that we need to de design efficiently in our houses. At first, when we did so, people will think, oh, no, no, these houses are too small. Yes. You know, but it's efficient, it's, it's a design efficiency that we've applied. Then the second thing is the land size. Yes. You know, if you, before, before we introduced some of our land sizes, the average land size was 20 by 25 or 20, 20 by, by 30. 30 yeah. I will tell you that Tough Africa Global has now produced some plots of less than 200 square meters. If you go to Dalaba, yes. our two bedroom houses 
are as small as 187 square meters. Why this? And is people it? are living there. Why? Because we want to cut down on the price. So that so, they can be able to... So meet. Affordability. Okay. You asked about middle income being afford, you know, to be yes. able to access the houses. Yes. You know, for it to be affordable. It is very obvious. I mean, land these days, we buy land. South Africa Global doesn't go to government and government gives it the land. Okay. The land is bought from the open market. And it is expensive. Yes. So, so, so what is done, if you buy the parcel of land, the more plus you can get out of it with an efficient design in master planning and everything, the better, and therefore the, the price will be affordable. So land is a key component yes. in housing development. Efficiency and size of house Matters. is another component. The type of material that you are using is another component. Labor is a component. Finance is also a component. Yes. So, so for me, I would want to stop on those five components that will make up the house. And the more efficient you are in all these components, uh, then the question of affordability now comes into play. What will you have changed if you are accorded with all chances and opportunities for you to be able to meet the demand of a very average income earner in the Gambia? For instance, let's talk about the, the nurses, the teachers. Those are earning less than 5006 or less than $10,000 in a month. If you are given the chance to talk to, the, to, to be able to avail yourself with those chances so that uh, the, 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 our soldiers, the security sectors can also come to tough African global properties and be a proud owner of an apartment or a, a plot. Now let me tell you BB, there's nowhere again in the world where certain categories of income earners can buy properties from private developers. But so what government, government do, no, yes. let me tell you what government does. I want to categorize it in three categories. Good. One is social housing. Okay. Social housing, the lead is taken by government. And then you have affordable housing. Affordable housing is also, it's mainly for the middle income earner. Yes. We, we, we target those, those, that bracket. And then you can have the up market where luxury housing and so on. Now, what you need to do is that, on average, what, what the, you need to look at one's income. And one third of your income, not more than one third of your income should go into a mortgage. Yes. Because those category of people can only access a house through a mortgage scheme. Yes. So then we'll bring the banks in. Mortgage, uh, mortgages are not given by the developer himself. Yes. <coughs> Sorry. So, so you need to first look at how much they are earning. So we can just work it quickly backwards. How much does a nurse earn? Average between five to ten. Okay, let's say let's say even ten thousand dollars. Yes. Now one third of ten thousand dollars is about three thousand five hundred. Yes. So three thousand five hundred multiplied by twelve, you know, that's under uh, what forty thousand dollars. Less than that. So forty thousand dollars he multiplied uh, uh, no by yes. by twelve. So so twelve times three that's thirty six. Okay, but let's say forty thousand dollars. Yes. Now forty thousand dollars he divided by ten. Multiply by 10, sorry. Yeah, then we are talking about 380. <coughs> 400. Well, yeah. So, yeah. So, so really, you then need to look at houses which are probably $500,000. If you want to make housing affordable to um, uh, the, that bracket of public servants, let's call them public servants. Public servants yes. What you need to do, first, government need to allocate land. Good example is, are all the estates that were done by Social Security and Housing Finance Corporation. Yes. Like Canifing, Bakote, um, uh, Brusubi. Yes. Social Security, we are giving the land free by government. So they didn't pay for it. Yes. You know, then obviously it was given now to civil servants, uh, you know, after it has been serviced. So that's one thing that, one, government must play that role. Government must move in and take certain parcel of land and allocate it, you know, for that purpose. Yes. Now, then you can engage private developers. Well, when you engage private developers, you agree on design and you agree on the quality of work mm -hmm. and the price. Now, in order to make it affordable, what one what government can do is also offer incentives to the developer. So those incentives will also bring the price down. Yes. Then you can now, for the offtake, the banks has a, have a role to play. So what you do is you get the banks to come in, now issue out mortgages with lower interest rates. Yes. So you see all these components, so government with the land, 
the private developer comes in and obviously the private developer brings down his margins or her margins. But this is thrown together with government and then engage the banks to lower the interest rates and give out mortgages of over 10, 15 years. You know, and in doing so, what one needs to do is to engage some multilateral financial institutions. You know, who will bring in monies that are affordable, less interest rates, and also a longer tenure. Yes. Because, because the banks, the monies that we go there for in this country are for short term. Those are short term deposits. Yes. People deposit this money and they can come tomorrow and get the money, take the money out. So the banks cannot give you a medium or long term lending Mortgage, yeah. on it. Yeah. But, you know, the IFCs, you know, maybe the World Bank, maybe uh, um, uh, the Islamic Development Bank, all those banks there, they, at times they have, you know, monies that are affordable on such purposes. So really, we so, need to take, see government take the lead in trying to solve house, the housing deficit and making houses, housing accessible to the common man yes. in the country. This, this, uh, this has been your priority to able to house many Gambians as possible. And you've been the pioneer, the doing in the business, over 40 years of experience. And uh, now we're having many, many real estates coming up, though, you know, dealing with only service land, bear land like that, selling it cheaper, 100,000, 100, 200,000, $300,000. Let's, let's forget about the mode of their businesses. But you've been the leader. Have you ever taken the, uh, the, the, the mantle to able to talk to a few real estate um, I mean, uh, managing directors, they're able to talk with the government if they can able to avail this opportunity whereby they can able to give some portion of land for, for the serious one. Because we understand the, main, the many the area, but on the, we also understand that there are some real estate that are not doing exactly what is expected of them. But well, that's the, regulation. You, yes. know, you, know, you know, regulation, the responsibility of regulating any industry, government needs to take the lead. We have engaged them and we continue to engage them. But it's their responsibility. It's like saying, okay, we are living here, we need to have our own police to, for, to stop crime. The responsibility of the peace and security of any nation the is the government and they set up a police. Yes. So you have a, have a policing unit, for example, Pura. Pura regulate the utilities. Yes. So government, through its, our land ministry, should, I think they're working on it, should set up as quickly as possible a regulatory body. Once you set up a regulatory body, everybody will have to abide by it. But for how long? For how long? I, I honest, actually, um, uh, on one of our shows that we did, um, the um, permanent secretary said they are working on it. And I think they are working on it. The competition commission, they did a report on the real estate. Yeah. I think everybody is aware that, look, there is a need to quickly work on regulating this industry. But, you know, government doesn't move as fast as the private sector does. Yes, of course. So, of yes, so, 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 but I think they're working on it. They're aware that there's a need to uh, regulate this industry, and uh, they're working on it. We, uh, I know that you are doing a whole lot of things for the community, for the communities in the country, and we, we seem that you've been doing a whole lot of things for the disabled and also the university, uh, school-going kids. Uh, but do you have any component, skill training component for the future leaders in the industry? Not the future, we have it currently. You haven't seen some videos that we released. Currently we are training 25 um, um, uh, students on masonry. And this we are doing in partnership with the IPC. And um, yes, we have, a, we, have a, we have a technical training institute which has not been formalized with a fixed abode, you know, but we are working on it. But we, we do take interns actually from GTGI, interns come there. And then also now we have training, um, a team of trainees that we take and train them on a full course. Currently we have some young people who are doing missing. You've been outside the Gambia in several regions, uh, yeah, Gambia style. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, for, for, for some quite um, enough years, actually you've been investing in the Gambia. And before you come back, uh, some real estate that also came in, about three, four, five, up to ten, you can count them. So does this not affect tough market? No, no, no. We are still the biggest in this country. We are the biggest. Uh, recently, I'm sure you have seen that Tough Africa Global has just launched or are uh, preparing the Tough City. The yeah. Tough City alone is 5,000 units. There is no, no private estate developer that, that has developed so far or set up any development even 500. 
So you can imagine we are doing 10 times any bigger than anybody. I doubt if there's any estate that you know that's developed 200 or even 300 units. Of course, there are some few realists. I mean, one realist that I can uh, at least have 250 units. Yeah, 250 units. Yes. I mean, Burfoot, Burfoot weed was since 2000. It's 600 units. Burfoot Gardens yes. is 600 units. Biaram Bamba is 210 units. And this was since 1998. Now, um, Dalaba is 375. Uh, Tulip that is coming up is 600 and something. So, now, so, so the sprouting of the real estate agency has No, been, no, no, no. Look, we, we don't compete don't with anybody. We, 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 we beat our own records. You know, we don't compete with anybody. We set a record and then before anybody catches up, we beat our records. So, so we, we, we're no longer developing estates. That's, that's the statement that we have made with the, with the, with the tough city. And the tough city is not only residential. It's a whole city. Live, work and play. Industries, wow. we are building industries there. More. Agriculture is the whole value chain. We are, what we are focusing now, which is what we are rolling out in the whole of Africa, we de develop cities and micro cities. So when we get the vast parcel of land, it's residential, educational. In the tough city, we have a, a junior school, we have a senior school, we have a vocational training college, we have a university. Oh, wow. Yes, and then we have a hospital there, we have a clinic, we have industries. And then, and then um, uh, uh, um, sporting facilities, golf course, hotel, wellness center. The list just goes on. Even a retirement uh, village where retirees can now live and uh, the comfort of the city. Uh, but what we are doing now for the first time is going through the whole value chain of living. That's what we are addressing. Yes. We are not only addressing housing, but uh, we, the, we are addressing the whole value chain. So agriculture is something that we are going to apply in our development. So you're going to have greenhouses. You know greenhouses, it's on intensive agriculture. Yeah. So you can grow things like even strawberries. You can grow other things that will not grow here normally. So anything that is consumable, that, can be, that should be grown and consumed by the residents, will be grown within the city. So jobs will be created. And then educational, obviously. If you have kids, they will go to a good school. You know, if you want to go to university, you, you can go there, student accommodation and all, you know, all this, you know. Hydroponics, we are going on hydroponics, which is very modern. You in know, that city? In that city. And then, and then we're, we're also putting up, um, um, we're putting up um, aquaculture because it's close by a river. We're going to farm our own fish. You know, so, so you don't have to leave and then commute to work. So everything that you need is there. And we have started already. In October, the foundation stone will be laid, prices will be up, and within, by, the, by September next year, we intend to have 50 houses fully developed. 50 houses fully developed? As the first Over 5,000 units yes, at yes. Uh, Tough City. Yes. Uh, tell us about the, 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 the challenges in the housing sector. The major challenge today, I mean, there are so many challenges. With housing, so many challenges. But major for the Gambia, yeah. and not only with housing, is labor. Unskilled. People don't have the skill to do certain things. I mean, basically, today, if you go to a building site, and I can bet my last dollar, the majority of people who are building on building sites yeah, are non-Gambians. Yes. Yes. That is sad. We, as Gambians, we need to do certain things. And this must be addressed as soon as possible. Otherwise, we are going to attract Foreign. foreign you know nationals coming in here but what that means is not only them taking the jobs it means price is higher yes. because if somebody leaves his country to come here what it means that he's getting more so we are paying above average salaries to attract these guys these these workers here that's a major major mm -hmm. challenge but what we have seen recently is the price of building materials and the way it is increased you can go today monday to a shop Yes. To buy an item. You go back on Friday in the same week, it has gone up by 10, 15, 20 percent. Yes, of course. It's not affordable. I think on this one here, not only on building materials, on prices, the way they are jacking up, something needs to be done. It is getting to a point, like, a, like it's getting to a breaking point. I mean, it's, it, I have never seen anything like this. And this makes cost of living too, too, too expensive. I can tell you that the cost of living in the Gambia is very, much very, more expensive than Nigeria. 
Yes. And the earning power in Nigeria is much more than here. It is, this country is very, very expensive. And it can be proven. We are now in September. Yes. What you were buying a lock or plywood or corrugated seats or so, most likely it's about maybe 100 and something percent. Well, not 100 percent. Maybe about, about 80, 30, oh well, 80, 40, 70 percent or so. 70 percent. 70 percent, yeah. But honestly, it is getting to a point where it's reaching breaking point. What, okay, what, what, what do you think is the cost? The government need to, don't you think, don't you think if the, if the place, if the real estate is being regulated, for instance, people like you, few, a few individuals come together, form a group whereby they can able to uh, import such things and make a price control with the government. Importation is not sustainable. We but have we, to we find... Do, we, we do not have plywood. No, no, look, we have to find ways, we have to find ways of adding value. It's not only plywood. A country cannot depend 100% on, on importation importations. on everything being consumed. Actually, It's a non-starter. We need to find a way as a country on how to add value on certain things. So at least we bring the price down. But one of the things that has affected everybody globally is shipping. Since COVID hit, what you were shipping into, the, into, into, into this country, into Gambia, for about two, three thousand dollars a 20-foot container, yes. it's now about $6,700. So it's more than 100% increase, just shipping alone. Materials have gone up. You know, so yes, there are certain things we can, we can beyond one's control. But every country needs to be working as, much, as hard as possible in limiting its um, importation of materials. So at least we need to be producing something here. Because when you produce... Use, you will then sell this yeah, out, export the, it, the power and then the you prices. will earn hard currency. Yes. And maybe those that you cannot produce here, then you can buy it with that hard currency. But this country, think about it. What do we produce as a country? Almost zero. Yeah. And look, this place, for me, honestly, yes, I am in real estate and this is a real estate show. But we need to do everything possible in agriculture. Agriculture is the future of this country. We cannot ignore agriculture. Actually, I will tell you, I, will, I can send you some shots. I, have, I am now going into agriculture, and that is why my estate is now entailing agriculture. I am not thinking of only building a house and making money by selling the house. No, I am interested in feeding 5,000 families that are going to live in that city. Because everybody eats food. Yes, you said so, you, are so it, you are training about 25 youths on, on, on masonry. Yes. I think that if, uh, what about on real estate management and administration? No, that's not an issue. You know, no, 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 Bibi. Administration fails. Bibi, no, no, no. no. I was not there. Look, look, our problem no. today is the grassroots. I will yes. You I will tell you. Look, if you don't build those blocks, forget about somebody who's going to administer it. I will tell you. you have to administ start. Yes. Administration is a major failure in this country. I am the one who should tell you. I have a big company yes. with all this. That's not, uh, that right, that's, always. Yes. You see, when we're talking about the government, let, let's, look, let's look at the... The, 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 the trend of the, the real estate regulation, it's taken over a million years now. Before you regulate, you have to build. Yes. So let's start from scratch. First, huh? we need to find those guys who are going to build those houses. That's where the major problem is. You know, administration, you can go and study some, some social sciences and be trained short term to be an administrator. That's not a problem. There are so many administrators around. What you cannot find is that carpenter, that mason, that yes. electrician, that plumber. That's what we don't have. And to be trained to do that, it takes a number of years. And also age is an issue. So we need to, on a broad base, we need to get these young ones, maybe at the age of 14, 15, and start putting them into this, showing them that, look, there's dignity in being a mason or a carpenter. Yeah. You just show them that, look, you see Mr. Taft today, this is where he is. When he was 18 like you, he was getting his hands dirty. Yes. That's what we need to do. You were and a it, mason. No, no, no. A I, I, a carpentry. I, t I thought carpentry. But, you know, I went to Gambia High School. I did my O levels, you know. But I, I was very passionate about carpentry. So I really took it seriously. And I, I taught um, a carpentry in, in Gambia High School immediately after I left school in 75. And then also in Lamin High School, which is called Miserio. So that I have said in so many programs. Yes. But I, it, is, it should be a national effort to campaign and government should put in the policies where 
these young ones who are mainly dropouts should be encouraged to take up technical skills. Yes, skills. And you know what happens, BB? If you train them uh, with technical skills, you can export them. Yes. Countries need them. For example, in, in uh, uh, Qatar, when they were building, when building for, for the uh, World Cup, yes. they imported a lot of skills, a lot of labor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So even as a country, let's even imagine that this boy should be back. So we need if to they invest are in labor. Yes, in skills. So if these kids here, if for example, those who are now, we understand that you know, 100 and something thousand are in Germany. Imagine if 50,000 of them had good skills. 100 and something thousand yes. in Germany. Yes. Wow. So, so half of them, if they were skilled, honestly, they would not deport them. Yeah. They, they will need them. Jobs of course, there. they will need the, the, the government. Yes. But uh, anyway, he is Mr. Fajai. Of course, we cannot just say everything here. Mr. Fajai, please tell us what quickly because they've been... They've been... Uh, well, my, 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 last word, my last word, just to thank you. I, I, I do know that you, for a while you have been working on this show. So I am not going to say anything on construction, <laughs> but I am saying more on, on entrepreneurship and determination and passion. And that's what you have demonstrated. You know, it has been years yes. you have been planning this, you've been coming to me, you know, uh, you know getting advice, uh, yeah, you know. So I really this, want to yeah. commend you. And uh, you are a living example of the young ones. And today, you have your office, I asked about your cameras, you have people that you employ. Things like this must be encouraged. So my last words is to congratulate you and to encourage young ones to emulate people like Bibi Dabo. Today I will call you now the, the, the original, original Bibi Dabo, not the photo copy. Thank you so much, <laughs> Bibi. Well, Mr. Fajai, <laughs> the Virgin Director of Tough Africa Global. You have heard him and he's an elderly statesman. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Fajai, for coming on our program. And this is from me, Bibi Abubakar Dabo. Till we meet again. Bye bye. This program is brought to you by BB Consultancy in partnership with B4U Properties, your reliable estate dealer, BMG Properties, outstanding home providers, Kairos Real Estate, link us and be a home builder, Double Jewelry Real Estate, operation on your property, Freedom Properties, in Allah we trust. Global Properties Your Innovative Property Solutions Combo Real Estate Operation Shelter Donation Sultan Traders and Real Estate We don't bend the truth to make sales Tough Africa Global Our experience is global Our focus is Africa Tough Africa Global is the first and biggest private real estate developer in the Gambia with a presence in seven other African countries. We are launching the development of the first smart and most modern office and retail towers in the Gambia called Tough Twins, located in the heart of the Kanifin Institutional Area and 10 minutes drive from Banjul. Tough Twins is designed to have five floors of office spaces ranging from 50 meters square to over 1,000 meters square, two elevators, central air conditioning, 24-hour electricity and water supply, with the ground floor reserved for banking, supermarket, restaurant and coffee shops. For your bookings and reservations, please call now on 376-2333 or 776-2333.